Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Are you a multi tennis string user? Do you want to dabble a little bit or change into a hybrid or a poly, but are you scared to do it? What should you do? Stay tuned. All right, no coffee today, but on the super thanks side, I want to thank at Joseph C. Chung and at Terry Calling 2331 for your super thanks. I appreciate you hooking me up and taking care of the channel. If you want to hook us up with super thanks, link is below. If you want to get me some coffee, which I'm missing today, buy me a coffee is the way. Network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you guys. Maybe coffee next time, okay? All right, so a lot of you have actually asked me in person and um, email, Instagram, what should I do if I've never used a poly string before? How should I ease myself into it? That is actually a very, very good question. If you of a certain age, like myself, and you grew up playing with nylon based strings or natural gut, uh, poly might scare you a little bit, which it probably should. Uh, it could definitely hurt you. Uh, in my own experience, I've like gone to poly, cut it out pretty quickly, uh, went back to my synthetic, went back to a hybrid with poly, cut that out, went back to synthetic, went to gut, went to gut poly, loved it for a little bit, but the poly kind of didn't sing with me. It didn't work for me. So I cut it out. So I went back to multi for many, many years before I tried um, poly again. So it, it's not for everybody. So let me just start there. So be careful what you do. What I have here today is two players that played in the Ivy Leagues and they both played about 10 years ago. In their whole college career, they've used multis. One, her name is Taylor. She played at Princeton. She uses this racket now. She played NRG, 16 gauge. Sensation, NXT, um, I've been stringing her rackets for over 10 years. So she's exclusively only gone with multis. She breaks strings fairly quickly. So I had to introduce her to a poly, but I didn't want to kind of, you know, take the poly and just put it in because she would definitely, you know, have shock and be shocked at what her racket's doing and what she's missing from the softness of the multi. So what I did for Taylor was I kept this on the main and I took confidential 18 and I put it on the cross. I actually dropped her tension about three pounds as she was going 55 all around. So I dropped it to 52, okay? Main cross 52. Now, after a while, after a while, as she started breaking strings and figuring out um, how to break it and finding that sweet spot, I brought her in the 17 gauge. 
Still on the cross though, still on the cross. As I thickened the cross, the mains started breaking a little slower. Instead of a week and a half to two weeks, it bought her another week. So we're in about three weeks now, okay? And she didn't really complain too much because the softness of the multi was still there. And we're talking how long now? Maybe six months down the road after doing this, she was she figured it out again and was breaking the strings even faster than that. So what did I do next? And this was probably the biggest um, thing I did for her. And I was worried that she wouldn't like this. I took, I went back to 18 gauge confidential and put it on the main now. So I crossed it with the NX, excuse me, I crossed it with the NRG. She was actually okay with it, surprisingly. She figured out that um, I could spin it a little more. It's a little firmer though, but there was more shape on my falls. After she got used to that, maybe a month, two months down the road, I went thicker into 17 gauge as she started breaking it faster again. And here we are today. We got Confidential 17 on the main and NRG 16 on the cross. She does only break the cross though. I would love to see her break a main one day, but she has that kind of a stroke that, um, you know, she, she takes it, she goes cross court a lot on the forehand into the backhand side. So she does a lot of inside out. Uh, she has a two handed backhand in which she does a lot of inside out too. So she breaks the crosses, <laughs> but at least I'm making her break the crosses. So that's Taylor's story of how I eased her into some kind of poly. Now, what she said to me though, um, was after I initially put the 18 in and she broke two of her strings, she said, um, you know, I feel like I want to go back to uh, a full bed of multi. So I put her back to a full bed of multi. After she broke that string, she came back to me and said, um, I'm, I'm missing something. I, I kind of got used to the multi, uh, excuse me. I got used to the poly and what it was doing for my ball. It was missing spin. You know, my slices weren't cutting as low and, and I missed the, the natural spring that the uh, poly gave me. So she missed it and asked for it back. Okay. So you may, you know, decide that you want to try a full bed of multi again, and then you feel like you're missing something. So that's a good sign. That means your body and your muscles have gotten used to um, what a poly does for you. Okay. So the other person, my man, Sean, who played at Harvard, plays with Burns, and he uses this crap string called Top Spin, 15 light. So it's kind of a dead string, a you know a dead multi that uh, is dead and is textured. And he just likes to, I call it suffer, because I'll string this up at 57, 58 pounds straight bed of this. And I'm like, you know, that thing's not giving you anything, right? And he's like, yeah, I just want to struggle and, and I want to work for everything. And I'm like, okay. And I, I convinced him. I was like, Sean, dude, just trust me this one time. The way you swing, the way you put so much spin on the ball, your ball's going to jump if I put poly on it. Just trust me this one time, okay? So he did. I talked him into it. I actually went straight for the jugular for him. I went straight 16L confidential and he's so much of a touch and feel kind of guy he was like i couldn't control it it was going about this much out off the line it was doing these things that that i didn't think a string and a racket can do together and i'm like yeah it's the magic of poly and he's like yeah but i feel like i'm cheating i feel like it's just doing too much for me 
your opponents don't seem to say that. It helps your opponents. This is hurting you. Imagine what you can do with confidential. It's like, yeah, but I just can't get used to it. I'm like, okay, fine. So we went back to the top spin, and I'm like, <sighs> month later, I was like, okay, let me give me one more shot at this. Give me one more shot at this. I'm going to blend the two. I'm going to blend the two. But I'm going to put this on the main, okay? So at least you feel some familiarity with the top spin on the cross. He's like, okay, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. So I did that for him, and he's like, you know what? It still kind of feels a little weird. I'm, I'm just a little out. It's just not, it's not coming through a little bit. It's kind of diving a little bit too much. I'm like, once you t tune that part of your forehand in, it will dive more. You know, it, it remember, this is going to help you, not hurt you. He's like, yeah. So he begrudgingly kept playing with it until the cross broke. And um, he gave it back to me. He's like, can I please have my old one back? And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm going to do it for this racket over and over with this. Okay. So he's got like four rackets and three of them are strung with top spin. And one day he played three setters. He always plays three setters because that's what he does. He came up to me and said, I think I'm getting a little old. And I think I need that combination from you again. Because I use that racket and... It actually helped me a lot. And I'm like, yeah, going three setters and punishing yourself, making it hard for yourself with topspin isn't doing anything for you except hurting you. That's why you're going three sets. I would like to see you go two sets. So he's like, yeah, you're right. We'll go with uh, two rackets with the combination so that I can ease into the poly so my wish for sean would be to go a full bed of confidential eventually but you know because he is who he is and he's very you know, touchy-feely and very sensitive about these little changes um i'll have to you know ease him along but i know that he'll get there okay i mean it took me five years to get there until they made confidential. Um, you know, I was not poly essentially. So that's kind of the magic of confidential, at least for me. Uh, you'll have to find the magic that works for you. If you want to, you know, pursue using either a hybrid of poly or a full bed of poly, but it, it takes time. Your, your muscle memory isn't used to that type of springiness that type of snap that firmness that you know when the ball contacts your strings um, it makes you feel so if you're thinking about it ease your way into it i've given you two examples and a third including you know a third which was my own uh, of how to do it okay so i hope that helped guys thank you for watching tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis. Hanlon, great match as ever. Oh man, thank you so much. You. Next week, same time, same bat channel. All right, my buddy Hanlon and I have been playing for over 20 years with each other. I'm so glad that I have found my tennis buddy. And we just happened to kind of started playing, right? So the number one problem with tennis is if you don't have a buddy like Hanlon, you don't play tennis because I wouldn't have been able to play for 20 years without him. And that's when Player Court comes in. 
there's over 27,000 people registered that you can play with. Just check out playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin. There's a tennis buddy waiting for you.